Frank, you want to sing a little bit? Sure, yeah. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Creative Conversations, the ongoing series of pseudo professional practice uh, work that we do here in the gallery, of course, free of charge, Frank, just so that we can. What's up? Sure, yeah, all right. Oh, okay. all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Remember to mute that. Sorry. <laughs> Testing. <laughs> we're back. All right, we're back. So um, this week we are very excited to have perhaps questionably the greatest photographer of art in the city with us. Of course, there's great Karen Mosh. So um, I would be absolutely pleased to introduce Karen Mosh here uh, in the humble halls of Da Vinci Art Alliance. Um, and so if you don't know a bit about Karen Mosh, I don't know how many photographers we have here in the audience, but we have one who specializes in, photograph in photographing artwork specifically. And though we all need one of those in our lives as artists, uh, I think we're gonna learn a lot about what uh, photographing artwork looks like, feels like, and hopefully some a big Q&A section along with this today. Um, so let's all give a very modest <laughs> round of applause for Karen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Um, I hope we can answer most of your questions here today. Um, is everyone a practicing artist in this group? Are you taking your own pictures? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. How, how, I mean, we can talk about that. Uh, Brian, Brian asked me to start and say, so my background um, is I've been photographing art for several decades and it's all I photograph. And I started out very early on just photographing artwork. I feel very fortunate that I came into that in interior uh, design. I did interiors for decorators, but mostly art. And it's just, I've now for many years just focused on painting and sculpture, primarily some jewelry, but mostly, you know, both to the interior. Group. So um, I feel very fortunate. I'm surrounded by beauty every day in my studio, and as you are, and uh, it's, it's a great way to uh, to be at work every day. So I am a self-taught photographer. Um, I did not study photography. I studied archaeology, which is my passion in the ancient world. But it, all of that is relevant to the art and the material culture that I love from the ancient people to what we are here today. So. Um, I bring that kind of to work every day and with all my clients who are all wonderful artists. So um, so I think one of the ways Sam and I talked about setting this up today is either we'll start with questions um, about individually and, we'll, and I'll talk to you and sort of tailor and help whatever constant you have set up in your studio to photograph art and or create a constant so you're not reinventing the wheel every time there's a show and you have to start taking pictures of the paintings again. So we'll talk about whatever level of detail you like in terms of that. Um, so, so in terms of everybody is using a camera, right? Phone, phone. Yeah, all, all phones. Okay. I, I try. Uh, <laughs> I, I just thought I, I, I'm just taking the photography class. Okay. From here, I'm trying, but I'm I just my first attempt to do it with a digital camera. Okay. Uh, but okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk because it, it really. This is, unfortunately, I say that now the digital camera. Mm -hmm. So I mean, our phones are, um, and they are getting better and better and better. Even the newest, which not this one, but the newest iPhone, has a forty-eight megapixel sensor. Well, your cameras don't have that. I mean, or most mm -hmm. most cameras don't. That's pretty extraordinary to think how quickly we've come that far to that. Um, so if you're all working with cameras, then we'll talk about camera stuff. I mean, uh, phone, excuse me. And we'll talk about phone settings, as I usually do if we're talking about cameras and help you set your camera or now your phone for photographing artwork, as opposed to parties or locations or whatever. And the important settings about light balance that we want to talk about to get the most accurate um, color. Phones aren't the best way to do it. I will say that right out. Okay. Oh. So actually, before we yeah, jump into okay. just phone stuff, yeah, sure. could you maybe give us like an abbreviated pros and cons of phones versus more traditional camera? Like what's, what are we giving up by not picking up a camera or, or vice versa? A nice shot lens. 
And what does that mean for <laughs> okay, uh, so, a so Google the, painter? Right. Yeah, so cameras, I mean, so in the end of the day, what you want to do, why you want to get the best and sharpest and highest resolution pictures is you hope when you submit your paintings, your images to a show, that they're going to project them on a wall like this, not look at them on their laptop on the desk or their desktop, either one. You know, you don't, you don't that doesn't do you any justice. You've got that at home, your laptop or your cat or your desktop. And you really want to see, they want someone to really see the work and feel it. They can't see the work, you're only submitting images. And so I think getting the sharpest resolution will give you that when they're using a projector like this to project on a wall this size. That's how shows traditionally have been jury, painting shows, sculpture, back in the day when we shot slides. And, and they would, I mean, even some grants like the Bader Fund, they would rent these $4,000 projectors just to look at the images for, for the grant. It's a serious grant. And so they really, you know, when people spent their lives and they, they don't want to just look at a little $200 projector, they literally pay attention. So with digital, they've done the same thing. And, and so grants will really do that, which is great. And so it's a, that's a great show to know. So that's why you want the highest resolution. Either the camera either gives you your phone. Yes. So with cameras, There'll be settings, and you always want to shoot it on the highest setting, meaning the most megapixels of the camera. If it's a 20 megapixel camera, you should always be shooting it on 20 megapixels, not small JPEGs. In other words, you should just find a different camera. It just puts small JPEGs, seriously. So always think of that as shooting on the tip or the raw or whatever the cameras have mm -hmm. in terms of. And now iPhones have, and probably and Androids have. Raw settings on them in their software, mm -hmm. so they've come a long way to kind of catch up to cameras um, that way. And I can show you those settings in particular, you know, on the um, on the settings. So the iPhones have that mouse setting. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. I don't know when it started. Um, Maybe a year or so ago, maybe more, maybe two years now. I think I have an Android, and I think it's been like they, a couple of years. It's a couple of years, yeah. And they have yours, from, yeah, and yours too as well. Yeah, yeah, which is great. So we can we, we can talk about that individually, or as a group, I can come around and we can you know, make sure your cameras or your phones, excuse me, using your camera, so they may so they <laughs> may um, are, are set on on those on those settings um, for them, and then. The next thing we'll talk about um, after the technical part of, of your phone is we'll talk about lighting because that's really what it's all about in the end of the day. So that's what the key you know, to getting good pictures is, is light, as you know. So I'm assuming, I don't know if anyone has lights that they're using lights in their studios to light their paintings or they're taking pictures outside or they're taking, I don't know. Can I see a show of hands? What outside? Outside in the open shade. In open shade. That's good. Um, I would like to know how to do it with lights. With lights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anybody else outside, inside in your studio, available light or what? Yeah, cheap clamp lights. Clamp lights. Yeah. Well, or lights. Yeah. And all you have to do with that is really get the color balance right. Yeah. You know, kind of. Thing. That's something I would like to learn. Yes. So that's, I mean, that's what we're here <laughs> to talk about. Um, so the first thing when you set, if we're gonna, let's talk about a lighting setup as opposed to available light right now. So uh, if you have lights, two lights generally, are we talking, let's talk about paint. Is anybody 3D or is it everybody painters here? 2D. Thank you. I'm 3D. You are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, well, but you know. <laughs> well, I guess. Exactly. So we'll do that. We'll cover that as well. Um, so I think the first thing to know is a setup in your studio. If that's where you're always going to photograph your work, then try to figure out a place with the, not a window behind you, for sure, because then you can't control the light. Um, when the, that light, you know, outside is on the painting, you're trying to put two lights up to photograph the work. So if you have two lights on light stands, that you're talking about. Does everybody kind of know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So if you have them and you've set them at 45 degree angles to the painting, which is a good starting point. Um, and then we'll talk about glare and surfaces on paintings and so forth too, because that will be about positioning the lights. But if you have that set up, 
and the camera, you don't really want, you only want the light to be turned on to expose the painting, not a light from the window or a skylight above that you can't control that light. So I don't know what your setup is, but think about it that way, of where in your studio you're gonna put, pick a wall that you're gonna be able to photograph. Um, then you'll always be able to do it. Even if you can't leave the tripod and the camera and the, um, what do you call it, set up the, the lights, um, you can always put tape on the floor and say, okay, next month or six months from now, when I have to photograph again, here's where my light goes. And you'll just know that and create that for yourself. So, you're, it's, so it never changes. And then it becomes second nature. Oh, it's more important and much easier to do. Yes. Yeah, so if you're buying lights, yeah, you buy the poles, the stand, the light, light stands, stands, light stands. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what type of light? Is that online they have, you know, like um, LED lights? LED, well, LED uh, lights now are very popular uh -huh. um, because they're a clean white light. And I mean, clean, white in the sense that not like tungsten lights that are warm, like the living room or like these right. lights yeah. or a gallery. So yeah, so LEDs now, first of all, because digital, there's such a great bandwidth of what it can tolerate. You know, before you used to have to buy film, daylight or tungsten, there was just two kinds of film. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you might have, you might be in a studio that only has fluorescent light. There's three fluorescent settings on most cameras. So it, digital can really tolerate all of the different kinds of lighting we have now. And then you can color balance for the LEDs. So I would say, jumping into the 21st century, that LEDs would be a smart thing than buying tungsten lights now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the LEDs come in different um, yeah. uh, K or you know whatever. Well, 3200K uh, is the standard for tungsten for what's in a gallery. So if you were okay. in here and doing installation shots, let's say here, mm -hmm. you would want to set it at 3200 because that is the color balance in this room for these lights, projectors, the same thing as, as these kind of light. So, but if you were had daylight balance lights, that's 5200. And so the LEDs, don't quote me because I, I, but I think they're, they're a lot cooler and they're on that spectrum of closer to 50 and they'll tell you what it is and it's mm -hmm. setting. Yeah, we can do it. And you can see it in the camera. So, I mean, when you take a picture or your phone, excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah, when you take a picture, you will actually be able to tell if something's too cool or too warm. And then you can change those settings. And these cameras are so facile that way now. They really can too warm, too cool, and subtly change those mm -hmm. settings, which is really wonderful. Yeah, because everybody's artwork's different. Yours might need to be a little warmer. Yours might need to be a little cooler. And so forth. So that's also something mm -hmm. that paint dictates, and, and you know, as well as the lighting. Can, but, can I ask yeah. a question? Sure. Um, so one of the issues I usually have because my stuff is usually like at like four feet long, mm -hmm. that the lighting change or like the color of the lighting changes from like the top of the photo to mm -hmm. the bottom. That's yeah. usually like cool to warm or vice versa. And where's the light? I use natural light. Yeah, so available but, light. So yeah. outside or in the studio? Inside my studio, but natural light. Natural like like from coming the from the windows. From the windows. Yeah. Okay, right. So if I use plant lights, right. And for something long, would well, you advise like four lights? Well, I would definitely advise four lights. Okay. So because remember, where you set your lights is horizontal and you're shooting a vertical. Piece. Yeah. So you either can get four sets of lights. That's how if I have to do a very long vertical painting. If I don't, and I can turn the painting on its side and shoot a vertical mm -hmm. painting horizontally, remember your lights are horizontal. That's really what, how you want to think about it. Okay. Okay. But I don't know if your work, if it's possible to turn it and hang it that way in a different orientation. No, I don't think so. Before. Right. Because it's, yeah. Okay. So you can't do it that way. But for you, this situation would be to get two like four lights. Okay. Because you really need to light the top and the bottom. The fall off will happen about two thirds of the way down. And then you won't really have a lot of light by the time. You yeah, get yeah, because like piece. going in after the Photoshop for this is like it's a, a nightmare. No. So. <laughs> so what we want to do also is thanks for using the Photoshop word because we want to try to get this right when we photograph, not spend hours right. in the computer right. correcting things, changing things. I mean, you want to be in your studio painting. You don't want to be in front of a computer. I don't think. So um, <laughs> I do it, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> My job. <laughs> So, you know, to work in Photoshop. But um, so, yeah, so that's the best solution to really, Sam, for that. Oh, thank you. Sure. Um, actually, I, how much 
editing should we be doing, do you think? Like none at all. Minimal. Minimal. Very yeah. minimal. Think of it, yeah. Because so what we're going to talk about today is really capture of, of getting having the right light with the color balance and getting it right, cropping. We're going to talk about that and in the camera. I mean, you could, yes, of course you can do it in Photoshop. You can get everything as straight as a pin, you know. Right. But if you can really get most of the work done mm -hmm. when you take the picture and just keep perfecting that and getting better and better. So it's, it makes sense every time you start to photograph a body of work, let's say, um, because it's, all of a sudden we found out about a show and it's, you know, we have a week to get some images in there. So yeah, hopefully if you can just get that done on the camera is the, is the best, would be the best way for you. Yeah, because Photoshop can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> hate to say. <laughs> so yes. the LEDs come in so many versions. What type So I would get a day, I would, there are so many, and I, I'm not, I can find out more information for you specifically, but I would think it more of a daylight balance LED is what you want, just the way fluorescent for years now have evolved into having cool white to not so cool white to warm. They have a spectrum and LEDs have that now a narrower spectrum than I, I find that the uh, fluorescents do. Mm -hmm. So I, I would, yeah, I would look at what's a, closer to a daylight balance, which is 5,200 Kelvin. Okay. Okay, we'll see that. Yes. That's fine. So, but some of them are opaque on top, some are spiral. Some... I wouldn't, I'd stay away from the spiral and, because think of it, it's a, a, a light source, maybe sort of like that. You just want a, a constant source like that and not the kind we use in our house to save energy now, those spiral things. Right. I wouldn't, so I wouldn't I, use that for photographing I... artwork. You know, that I would, I would get one that's really sort of designed for that and they come with barn doors in them these led lights so you can feather off the light with them so you'll have a light head and you put it on the stand and then you can have what's called barn doors and so there are these two sides and so you can control the light a lot more right and keep the light on your work and off the side of the wall or wherever so if i go to um so camera stores and oh. in philadelphia there's really only one, and I, I have to find out if John sells them. It's called Webcam, and they're on 12th Street, just south of Vine, like 240, 244, something like that, south 12th Street, um, or north 12th Street, excuse me. And they're just between Vine and Waste. So not at and that's most. a professional camera store, and if he has them, but otherwise online, there are many people, but really the people with the most knowledge are B and H photo in New York. And B is the letter B and H. Um, if you go online, they have everything. They have probably some of the best prices in the country to order. They also have very, very knowledgeable people. Okay. But we do have one left professional camera store in Philadelphia, and it's webcam, because all the others closed in the advent of digital. I mean, what about unique? Is that unique? Yeah, they're one. in New Jersey. Now they actually over one on um, Second Street. Oh, they did in Old City, yeah. Good for them. After, after, after it hasn't been open that long. Yeah. Like, oh, good for them. I knew yeah. them years ago uh -huh. um, in North Jersey, and they were very much like B and H. And I did. I yeah. I used them at a time. At another yeah, time. I think they're pretty good. I haven't bought. They are good. There. No, they're, it's yeah. a very good company. So I would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad to know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty convenient. And very convenient. Mm -hmm. So there's and even to shop and get information mm -hmm. would be to go to a store like mm -hmm. that. And and see what they have in questions, absolutely. Because they're they're I mean John Webb who owns Webcam is, is wonderful and they're very helpful. They have a great staff there, and I'm just happy you have here that there's another one because all of them closed, all the big ones that mm -hmm. were in Philadelphia over the years, long before COVID. It wasn't a COVID thing. It was just digital and they do it yourself, you know, kind of thing is what happened. So you mentioned those barn doors yeah. and those lights a yeah. minute ago. Would you recommend those over something like a light diffuser or one of those kind of umbrella? Well, that, that's a different. So we'll talk about that. So mm -hmm. let's. So there's there's a. So it's a it's a sort of a bare light like um, this a bigger version of this, but I'm going to use that as an example. And then on the top, and it's sort of they're about this size, something like that. They can be long and narrow, or they can be round like this. And then the barn doors fit on a ring around it, and then you can feather them off the light, you know, from that to narrow it and focus it on your piece and so forth. 
like that, especially with you know glare on your paintings and things like that. Or you're talking about a, a sort of umbrella, which is a soft thing. And that's what somebody like Sam would use for 3D work because the harsh shadows that would maybe be created by what it's a hard light, the one we're talking about. These are known as hard lights versus soft lights that you bounce to an umbrella and then you get this really soft effect. It's sort of the way this light is now bouncing against that wall to fall on this piece very softly versus being direct on it and have shadows all over the floor. So for 3D, it's a very, it's a good way to do that and to still articulate all the shape of a piece, but without having very distracting shadows. I mean, sometimes you might want them, and that's a good thing too, but this is a good idea of what that soft light, an umbrella would give you on this piece. So, so that's, so you could have either one, depending, kind of depending on your work and what, but for paintings, you really want to see the surface. You, that's what you're showing someone. That's what it, Okay, and you need light directly on it, not a soft light. It's a much better, yeah, to give you the color. Yeah, and, and the sharpness, the hard light. I'm mean, gonna shoot paintings almost exclusively with hard light. Um, you yeah. shoot in the dark sometimes with my work. Well, I shoot everybody's work in the dark. Oh, you do. I love the okay. dark. Okay, so tell Turn me. on the opera. Tell me about that. It's <laughs> a great way to be on the planet. <laughs> It's worked for me. So why? Because you've been in my studio. Yes. I have two big windows behind where I shoot, mm -hmm. and I have dark shades. So that's okay. why it's dark. Yeah. So I have opaque shades. Mm -hmm. So I can. So, so, so I don't have any other extraneous light, and just the light that I use. And I use strobes, which are called daylight balance strobe right. lights. Strobe lights. So strobes are a whole other different thing, and we can talk about that. But I'm not sure that's okay. the kind of way people want it at this stage. And mm -hmm. I think. It's a much bigger investment, but I, I think because these LEDs are so clean and efficient in terms of lighting and, and really the, the way to go and digital loves them. I mean, I would just say mm -hmm. the work looks really good with digital. Mm -hmm. and, and so in that way, I would I would go today rather than even tungsten lights, mm -hmm. like little clamp lights kind of thing, if you were going to start mm -hmm. to buy a new setup. Yeah, I would think. Good. Do you have lights yet? Or no, I don't okay. have them Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I would look at unique and see what they have in okay. terms of uh yeah, yeah. In terms of that. And then for 3D, or even let's say if you had a piece that had 3D parts to it, but it hung on the wall, paintings like Diane's a good yeah. example because she does different things. It's not just one flat surface of the painting. So so then you could, if you had a maybe more sculptural part of the painting on the surface, you might use, like I was saying to Sam, you might use an umbrella, you might use a softer light mm -hmm. to do that. If the shadows, if, it, if the hard light makes such a harsh look on the sh on the shadows, mm -hmm. and then the shadows become really distracting for the image that yeah, you have. Yeah, I have to Photoshop the shadows. See, that's, sometimes. you don't want to do that. Yeah. No Photoshop. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that could, that could take a long time, you know, <laughs> hours. <laughs> In front of the computer, um, doing that work. Um, other questions about lights, just the, the lights themselves in terms of, oh, we're going to talk about outdoor and available light after anything about lights, hard lights and soft um, lights. Say you have like uh, five uh, bands of color. Uh -huh. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, maybe three of them are pretty accurate mm -hmm. and then two aren't. Right. So, like, how do you shoot for the best? Well, you're lighting the same surface with the same light. So even though you have your piece has five different colored bands of light, yeah, or exactly. color as you say. Yeah. So um, you, you and it's very contrasty. Is one very light and one much more dark or not? I mean, the thing is with the piece like you, the lights, the light you can't really adjust in within a piece. Unless you go to Photoshop and do that, and that's a different thing. But when you're setting up in your studio, how big are these pieces? Are they? Um, would you say roughly? You know, maybe from there to here. Wow. Oh, so they're big. They're very big pieces. And are you? Well, I I don't know in feet. Okay, but they're yeah. from. Uh, yeah, it's not about 
the the to the earth. That's pretty big. That's yeah. big. What well, you're talking about studio space. You no, know, no, no, no. I think I think you got some wires making your artwork. Your artwork. How big are you? How big are you? You large. I mean, I've been to your house. I'm surprised your act, your reaction was so delayed. No, um, so um well you know up to like like four feet so. four by six four by five or, or some of them okay if i put two together okay so but you still need when you light them you've got two lights and they're they're still going to hit the surface the same surface even though this much might be very dark and this piece over here might be lighter they still need to take the same amount of light with something like that, if the, if the really light piece isn't getting is is blown out, is getting too much light, then that is something you can easily correct in Photoshop. But it's not something you can really do with light because if the painting's four feet, four feet, and then you have panels of five different panels of light in there, you're going to have the same. The surface is going to take the same amount of light, and you want it to mm -hmm. on that. But then if like when you get the have you done this with your, have you photographed these pieces? And it, yeah, so it's always so like, tell me what happens. Well, which, uh, like the one I was doing today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there's light and then there's a green border. It's mm -hmm. a square paint. Okay. And uh, the green is uh, not right. Right. Uh, and it's like darker than it really is. Okay. And so it's, it's like, do I shoot to get the, you know, fool around and get the green better, or you know, uh, well, I mean, in terms of your, you're talking the hardest color. In terms of get. your exposure on that, so do, are you using a camera or a phone? A phone, okay. So, um, I mean, there's a limit to these phones, and I, I will just say that to do something which you're trying to do, um, you can put that in Photoshop and correct it there. Mm -hmm. So, we'll talk about white balance. So the first thing you really want to do is have, and you can buy this at Unique or any camera store, is a gray card. It's an 18, it's called an 18% gray card, and it's this big. And you can put this in the image without buying a fancy one that costs $100, which has all the colors in it, but it still has the 18% gray. It's a standard, it was a standard in film, and it's a standard still in digital. For people that print your work, it's a standard for them. So, so you could do that and you could photograph one feet one in the in the scene, just your first painting, put that in the scene, photograph it, take it away, shoot the rest of your paintings. And when you go into the computer, you use the white balance tool and you hit that card and it will write, white balance your entire whatever, say you did 10 paintings that day, get a white balance for all of those paintings. Mm -hmm. So they were all done in theory under the same lighting conditions, right? So that's what you white balance for. That's to get the greens, the best tolerance that a phone can do, which is not what a camera can do. A camera has many, many, many more megapixels in it to capture this col the colors. The way they talk about Photoshop having 38 billion colors. Well, cameras have so many more colors than, than what Apple's done, even though the newest phones are Android, either one. So, so, you're so like, you you are limited a little bit in terms of trying to get that green with whatever the other colors are in a phone. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. yeah, but in Photoshop you can tweak things if you know how to use Photoshop. So there are different, yeah, but but setting a a white balance hopefully will get that green a lot more accurate than you're doing with a gray card. So it's a simple out. tool. But do you recommend uh, Photoshop rather than a street? Excuse me? In general, do you recommend Photoshop using Photoshop for all the all the work that you photograph? Well, I because I shoot raw files, but are, you know what raw files are? So these are these are the original files that a camera captures. Okay. So it's the sensor in the camera takes in all the light it can in a raw state, and then you convert it to a TIFF file. And a JPEG file to process it so you can use them. You can't use raw files. People you can't read them only in Photoshop or programs like that. So I take them in raw, and that means they've not been altered. It's whatever my sensor in my camera can capture, it's all there. And what happens is you make a TIFF file, which is also uncompressed, and that's what you use for printing. 
And the difference between a TIFF and a JPEG, and more importantly for artists, the TIFFs are very big files, and they're, that's why they're used for printing, because you have all the color information in there. But when you make a JPEG, you have to shrink it down. And what that means for artists is throwing out color information. Not a good idea. So you don't want to really print from JPEGs. When you have a TIFF file, you want to print. And these phones make TIFFs, they make RAW now, and then of course JPEGs. So you, yes. Um, I find that the phone, you, there's certain colors I can't get. Sure, yeah. I mean, it, this so, limits of the phone, I'm okay. sure. All right. Just like her green, she can't, yeah. yeah. And she may not get that, but yeah. you'll get closer to it with a gray card and going into Photoshop and, and balancing the color. Or yeah, taking the picture, yeah, because you can't balance it. You take the picture with the phone, but then you have to do that through Photoshop. And hopefully that will get you at least um, in, in the best possible, you know, a standard. A gray card is a standard for color. But if, and if you send it out to a printer online or you print in your own home printer, yeah, it'll, it'll give you the closest to a standard that you can have. Yeah. Do you shoot any of the pictures with a gray card? You just need to shoot one, the first one, uh, right? Yeah. The, the painting with the gray card. The paint. So let's say we have a set up, and here's our on the table here, and you put the gray card, you set it up next to the painting, yes. you take a picture of it, and then you take the gray card away, and then you, excuse me, and then you um, start photographing all your paints. Oh. And then you take the group, and let's say I'm just using 10 as an example, you have five paintings you shot today, and you take them in, open them up in Photoshop. And you select them all and you take the white balance tool and you just click on the gray card and it you as you, as you selected all of them it will actually just correct all of them at once yeah I'm not, yeah i'm not that advanced yet <laughs> okay okay <laughs> work on that no, but all right yeah, so we'll work on that i'll work on that that's something to do. yeah but it's it the best yeah. way to get the, the most accurate color right. because you can't but I have settings in my cameras. I can't set color settings here. You know, there's filters. You've all seen those when you go send a photo to somebody. And that's to taste, really. Oh, I like it a little warmer. I like it cooler. I like it to look like an old photo or whatever you like. That's what that, that's all those filters are about. They're not saying, I'm going to make the green in your painting or the red in your painting, you know, particularly accurate, unfortunately. So there, there's limitations in that respect. So the same group of paintings, yeah, in one shot of the gray. Yeah, you only need to shoot it once mm -hmm. in the beginning. I would say do it first, as opposed to when you're finished at the last painting. Yeah, yeah. To remember, right? But either one, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. So that would be never done it, but I'm trying a better better way to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so does that make sense? I, okay. I have a question. Go to gray card. Sure. Um. So Mary and Aaron, yeah, Mary and Anna, mm -hmm. uh, we're both wondering if um, you had lighting tips for reducing glare on paintings, mm -hmm. um, especially when they're very flat surfaces with a lot of sheen mm -hmm. and lights bouncing off of it. Right. So let's go back to the first original setup that we talked about with the lights are 45 degrees apart, right, from the wall. So on the painting here, and then your lights over there with Sam and over here, Brian. So they're like this at these angles. However, that's that hard light hitting the surface of a shiny surface of a painting. So you, part of it is barn doors will help you feather off that light, but moving the lights closer, like 30 degrees and closer to in line with the painting and just having the light break across the surface of the painting will diminish that and help you control that. And the other way is to use polarizing filters. There's a filter you can put on your camera. It's called a polarizing filter. You probably, does anybody, now that on the phone, that, that's the problem. How do I put a filter on the phone? You can buy adapters and they screw in back here to this, and then you can do that. Um, they're much more readily uh, feasible on the camera, not, you know, because they're part of of a camera and of a lens, these filters. So a polarizing filter would be the one way also if you can't cut down the light. But if you're just trying to control it with the placement of your lights, just keep moving your lights closer and closer to parallel with the paintings. Mm -hmm. Right. And then so there, and then in one sense, instead of having a light here, you've moved it closer to the painting. And now the lights are this way yeah. and they're just 
feather off. They're just falling. The light's just falling. It's not direct. It's really fairly indirect at that point. If you have a really glary, shiny painting. Is, I don't think the orientation is the painting on the table. Or on a, on the wall. Let's just say this is, sorry, this is the wall. Right. Okay. And it's on the wall. It's on the wall. Yeah. And the Karen light's over there. Painting. And the, on the painting. <laughs> I'm the light. <laughs> He's the light. They're both light. light. They're light. Okay. Does that make sense? So they're at 45 degree angles from, okay. And the camera's over here with Diane on the tripod. Okay. So that's, that's great. So then, <laughs> so they would move the lights closer and closer and closer to the wall where okay. the painting's hanging. And then, and then the light, you're still directing at the painting, but as it falls off, you'll, you, you can see, you'll be able to see that glare. And then with digital, just take a picture and just keep looking at it and always remember to zoom in. So when you're back there, you're taking the picture of the painting, but don't forget to zoom in and look at the surface, look at the corners and make sure you don't have the glare, you know, in that painting as you move the lights. Cause it's, it's a, it will be a trial and error in that sense. Yes. So for example, this is the work. Yep. When you say the lights, 45 degrees is like this. Right. Well, oh, that's ninety degrees. That's ninety. That's like the clock, and that's oh, ninety. Yeah, yeah. You're here, forty-five. Okay, so yeah. it's more like that. Yeah, or yeah, that's yeah. exactly that. Yep, that's okay. it. Now, how close? Uh, At least be three feet away. Okay. Okay, because remember, as you pull the lights back, it will just disperse the light mm -hmm. more evenly across the surface of the painting. So at least three feet, maybe four, depending on the size of your painting. If you have a little one and a half foot painting. That's plenty. But if you have a bigger painting, mm -hmm. like this person's four foot painting, you probably have your lights four feet away or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the further back you pull the light, mm -hmm. the more evenly that light will get, right. as you know, dispersed across the surface. So so that's that's the way that we're kind of thinking. And the other thing is you want to have your light right at the midpoint. So if the painting is four feet high, you would really want to have the center of your light at the midpoint of the painting, at that two foot mark. I'm just using simple math. Four feet, your light would here. So it'll fill here and fill here, you know, the whole painting once you, you know, pull it back. And so your light in the center. on that horizontal. That's what I mean. They're on the center. They're on the center on that part zone. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've only photographed on table. On table. A light. But the same, well, it's on just. On the table and. And, and looking down. Go, so you have small down. work, right. Um, you must have small work to not bigger than posters. Okay, though. right, right. So to I mean to get above the work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So exactly. You get you're, on you're doing the same thing with your lights mm -hmm. on top of a table. I get on the I stand on the table. And you're standing on the table. Okay. I've decided not to do that with my program. Stand on tables. <laughs> 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 so that's why I don't do that. I shoot off the wall. But I understand people that do that. And if it works for you, and you can't do it with, I shoot 10 foot, 20 foot paintings. I can't, obviously. So my setup is very different, but you were doing exactly the opposite. I mean, exactly the same as me, uh -huh. but just above. Okay. It's the same thing. Your lights, it sounds like are 45 degrees mm -hmm. kind of thing, exactly. Hitting the surface of it. And how is that, how is that for you? How are things, how are your photographs, I guess? Yeah, it's okay and yeah. unless it gets too big. And okay. yeah, then it's tippy yeah, then you're really <laughs> on your tippy toes, right? But I have a, a smaller ceiling now, so I okay. have to try that. <laughs> you're all okay. floor. <laughs> well, the floor would be the next thing. Yeah. Although that can, but since I used to, when I would talk about not shooting on the floor for years, because you had a tripod there in between you, you know, mm -hmm. and you're you have you're trying to get away from the legs, of the tripod, the lights, and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's a very awkward setup. But you're not using a tripod; you're using a phone, and so you really have the leverage to do that mm -hmm. to put your lights here. So if you get bigger pieces, then you can shoot on the floor, be on a ladder. I've taken a million pictures on a ladder. Paintings. <laughs> I mean, you just do. Ladders are great. Step stools, all that stuff. So then. You can do that. You you have a facility to do that because the tripod's not in the way. Mm -hmm. It can be cumbersome. And and I have the option of, of three lenses on my camera. Uh -huh. Is it always better to use one? I mean, further because it would be you want to be okay. closer to so the you have you're using a camera. No, I'm no. using a phone. A phone. I have the three. Well, lenses. You mean those three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Gee, I never call them three lenses because I just think it's wide angle, sort of 
So um, if you want to be, well, they are. What the, I, I know they are. What the best thing for you to do, seriously, is to put it on the middle, not the 0.5 or the, mm -hmm. or the two. Yeah, two. So stay in the middle and have the flat, it's the flattest field of the lens. Because remember, you're photographing something that's flat, your artwork. So you want you don't want to use a wide angle lens mm -hmm. that would then you have to correct in Photoshop, mm -hmm. which it's unnecessary. So if you can get far enough away where you have to stand, always do it on the middle one and move back to the artwork. Mm -hmm. Don't just stand at the same place and go, oh, it doesn't fit. Now I have to get use a wide angle mm -hmm. lens. Mm -hmm. Always use the middle one. Okay, then, in that way. What number is the middle one? I have only two lenses. Oh, two. Okay, so yours. So in your phone, it's probably a zoom mm -hmm. and, and then a regular one. You want to use the regular one. Yeah, yeah. And then, then they went to the three, which go, gave you a wide angle. I can go to point zero point five to, to five. To, well, to five. when we're done, I'll look at your I'll look at your um okay. I'll look at your phone and then we'll set it and we'll and I'll okay. look at it and then I'll tell you. How, yeah. But, but I think what the new ones just gave us a much wider view, mm -hmm. um, you know, for architecture, mm -hmm. for travel, for all those things. So you'll just use the, the normal ones, what everybody wants. And that's why the 50 millimeter lens that was standard for 150 years on a camera, they called it a normal lens because it's the flattest field. Mm -hmm. It's not too telephoto. It's not too mm -hmm. wide angle. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's it because you're, Photographing something flat, and we want that for the surface for photographing artwork. Yeah, does that make sense? What about this in the phone? You have a size. You know, you can make the square. You can make correct. Yeah. So, can so you talk you, about that a little bit. I, I can because these new ones and in those settings, there's four by three. There's one to one, mm -hmm. and there's sixteen by nine. If you have a long, narrow one, so you and then there's square. For Instagram, although Instagram, I think that's why they did that, mm -hmm. but doesn't Instagram allow you to yeah, you different can, shapes? Yeah, you can now so they changed that, but that's really what that was set up for. But if you if your paintings are square, then you should definitely that will fill the surface of of the sensor in these in these stones. So use the shape. If you have a long narrow painting, this way, absolutely use the sixteen by nine setting. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to still use up the okay, full the, the space, shape, the shape, and you don't have to crop the top or right. crop the bottom off. Yeah, you you get to use the full use of the camera on that setting. So I, yeah. oh, um, I was just going to jump in. It's kind of one element that we haven't talked about as part of this kind of diagram um, of, of staging the photograph mm -hmm. is um, a tripod. Right. So um, I know you kind of have two options by there. You know, you are the camera and you're holding it and you're right in front of your right. you know, artwork and taking photographs, holding it in your hand versus right. a tripod. Uh, so with phones, we have these little tripods, as you can see. I don't know if any of you have these. I'll and only if, you're doing, and only if you're doing <laughs> tabletop stuff, but they're designed for, for mobile phones. So that's one way to do it. But then we're, we know what a traditional example like tripod is. And... My whole life is on a tripod. I've never photographed anybody's artwork. Oh, um, and let's, um, this also connects to that now, too. Right. So you can yeah. get an adapter. You can have a tripod like this and, uh, you know, and do this. Nice, light one. It's very light. This is lovely. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, but they come in all sizes and, and weights and everything now. But one of the great things about a tripod is you can. Yeah. And, and as you said, you can adapt it and put the phone on here. Oh, yeah, you just pull it. I think it's a little stick. You don't, you don't yeah. spin it yet. No, I just I was turning. Yeah, to, yeah. to loosen. Okay, cool. so there you go. This is your traditional tripod, and they haven't ever changed. And so putting a phone through an adapter like that on here, part of it is about composition. You're sitting there, and now your hand's free. And you don't have to worry about camera shape or yeah. anything or, oh, I have to hold it in this hand and then I have to hit the button the way we take pictures, you know, in our phones. So you put it on here and that frees all that up. And then you can set it up and you don't have the keystoning, which you can correct in Photoshop, in, in these cameras now. But this way, you know, you're just all set and ready to go. And then you can turn it and get it all set perfectly. Not worry about when you take the picture of 
it bumping or anything because you, you're holding one in this hand and you're taking a picture this way or however people take pictures. So it's really a tripod to really stabilize everything for you in that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they're, they're, and this is light as a feather, but it's still, I, mean, I can knock it. I haven't set it over. I haven't knocked my very expensive camera over on here either because if you bump it, and that's what's great. They're, they're just that sturdy, even a light one like this. So is that one yeah. in particular attached to the... Um, no, this is a different thing. This is called a tabletop tripod, and that's really just for you know doing tabletop yeah. stuff or doing exactly what Sam has over there. But there are adapters that will take this part and, and put or, this on here, and then you just slip your phone. Yeah, in. I think this yeah. one actually just slips right onto it. It slips right yeah. on here. On okay, so if we unscrewed it yeah. from this gray thing, it could okay. pop. I think it we take the They make all these. There's so many. So I those are all standard. That's standard now. This is the quarter inch screw. That kind of no, they separate, or that's that's made. They made it to do all, all that. that. This is universal. Okay, that's what's great. Yeah, universal. Yeah, that's you great. can tell that that is not universal. Or that right. it is universal <laughs> because the bottom part of it is gray and the top part of it is black. Yeah. they're not meant to go together, but they do because it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Good point. Right. That's great. Thanks. Sure. Um, other questions about tripods and things like that that, that would make your life. And by the way, you will only buy one of these in your lifetime. They just last. Mm -hmm. So if you share a studio with somebody and you can share a tripod or whatever, because you only need them when you're taking pictures of your artwork. Mm -hmm. But as I say, you'll probably only buy one in a lifetime. Even me who uses them every single day, probably only bought a couple <laughs> <laughs> over the years. Um, so the next thing, let's talk about taking photographs outside. So are we, well, first, are we clear about lights if you're going to use lights indoors and setups for you for that, right? And then if we're going to go outside on a day like today, the time of day for color balance, and I'm talking about when, let's use today as an example, which isn't the ideal. I'll get to the ideal day. <laughs> which is never happens when you need to have your own yeah. photograph. So, okay, let's preface with that. But early in the morning, the light's very cool, and then you'll be in Photoshop correcting for that. This afternoon at this hour, it's gorgeous, but it's too warm. So you really want to be at about 11 o'clock in the morning toward noon is kind of the best thing in open shade if you're going to be outside. You have a nice wall inside of your studio, your house, or wherever. You want to photograph unless you're inside where you get north light in your in your studio window and that's also in the morning a great time to photograph because the light balance is is you know not too cool not too warm if you, about 11 o'clock earlier in the day it's just too cool and you can see the blue light you know outside so but the best absolute optimal day would be a hazy day mm -hmm. flat light even completely even that means all the light in the sky the, the big gray cloud is just falling evenly over your artwork outside so but that's hard to find that day um unless you live in seattle or somewhere that has that weather <laughs> it's not here that's for sure so working on a nice day like today <clears throat> this kind of weather is try to do it at that time in the morning to get the most even and net neutral temperature of, of the light yeah to do that who's photographing outside or using daylight that way you want yeah so how's that is that it, it's pretty good it's pretty my, should be yeah, i mean that's... my work has not been very big uh -huh. so i go like this okay until i square it right sometimes i go like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah watching those shadows <laughs> good yeah you recommend lights over natural light I do in the sense that you have a lot more control. That's why. Yeah. I, I mean, so, so you do have, I have more control. The light's different every day. Yeah. I mean, outside. <laughs> yeah. And it's never different from here. <laughs> really, it just isn't. And that's, that's, yeah. So if you can, you know, work toward having a setup like that, it will be more ideal for you to just, yeah, figure out, as I said earlier, a constant in your studio where okay, this is where you know, the window's over there, not behind me. It's, you know, I can see what my lights are doing on my artwork kind of thing. And so you really want to do that. I mean, maybe you have to put the lights in a way, you know, 
because you need room in your stereo. Just put some tape on the floor and just figure out, okay, this is where I'm going to photograph when I photograph. The tripod's here, the lights are here and here, et cetera. So you can do that and that'll make, you know, a, your setup whenever you get it. If Does anybody have a studio that they share or they're in an artist studio building with other people that have, you do. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, that's something to think about too. Of, um, everybody needs to do this. And then if you had like a set of lights, that a few people can use, it's it's kind of you know a really nice thing. Yeah, to think about that. Yeah, you're not the only one doing this. You know, it's so. Yeah. Did you have another question? No, that's okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like everyone at the crane has a hookup because they can just go to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a good it's a good place to be building, <laughs> as we know. So we've touched on it a few times. Yeah. You brought up Photoshop. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I know that has a pretty uh, intimidating learning curve and mm -hmm. price tag. Yes. Um, so I'd love to know your thoughts. On However, that. I always think of artists when I think of this just last month. Photoshop always had this program, Photoshop Elements. And it was kind of baby Photoshop. You remember it? No, no. I never knew that. Uh, they yeah. haven't had a version of it probably for half a dozen years. They just brought it out again. There was always a program that cost, I, I don't quote me because I don't, I didn't look at what it cost now. I just remember getting an email from Adobe. And but it was $69 or $99 or something like that, as opposed to what Photoshop is. And Photoshop now, by the way, is all on a subscription plan, as much software in the world is. So Photoshop is $10.59 a month to tax to get big Photoshop. And that's every update they do and everything. However, elements, I don't know the price, but it was, it has probably all anybody needs, mm -hmm. almost including me, to do work in Photoshop. It was it's a very sophisticated program for what it is. And so, but it's elemental. So they they, they mm -hmm. it was really a great um, affordable for art students for years. Yes. Uh, somebody mentioned to me affinity that they have a something like elements. And it's it would be sort of like that then. I, I know of affinity, I don't use the program I because I've used Photoshop for decades, I so I don't, yeah. I mean they're up to version 23. Oh. Mostly because next year's 2023, that's we've caught up. Yeah. But I've been using Photoshop since four mm -hmm. or three mm -hmm. a long, long time. So but affinity, I know of the program. And all these programs are very serviceable for just what you need to do. Right. Are. And if they right. have an elemental kind of a baby they program. Do. Then that would that would be perfectly fine. You can use the gray card, do exactly the same white balance in that program, but any of them actually. And your Photoshop about, has a lot of competition now that it never did for years. I think it was when they were making an offer, mm -hmm. it was like thirty dollars. It might be. Oh no, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah. So you're sure. talking about an app on the phone, on the iPad, it and, could both, and on the computer. And on the computer would be okay. all, because all apps go across okay. all platforms now. Mary so. on the chat says she's a big fan of oh, Affinity. Oh, good. Yeah. So mm. recommendation for Mary. Good. Uh, <laughs> That's and, great. And it looks like a quick Google of uh, Photoshop Elements 2023 yeah. is that uh, it doesn't follow the subscription plan and it's just straight up hundred dollars. Yeah, you just buy software and you have it yeah. forever and that's it. Wow. So that's what it was before Great. and that's what they did. Let it update. Um I yeah, they don't have probably a little bit of patch notes, but nothing like Adobe CC, which is cloud computing, which is how they it's got it all off of easily piratable versions of Photoshop. <laughs> well, that was the point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was so depressed when I got my new computer and I lost my old one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I have a question. I, ha I feel like I have like a very long ago memory of being in your studio and you're photographing Diane's work mm -hmm. and you had a gray card, but it was like a color it card. Is. Um, yeah. Is that essentially the same thing as a gray card? It but is to color? The color passport that I have it's called, that's what they call it, the company, color checker. It's called a color checker. And it has all these colors in it, but it also has black, white, and also three grays. And, and has the middle one is the 18% gray, which is the only one I use. But when I send work to a printer, a printer wants to have that. Okay. Because it's a standard for them, not for me. 
It's a printing standard, the gray card is, when you go to print. Okay. So that's what it's for. So yeah, and then I include that file in that when you send it to a printer. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it's for. So it's it's actually creating a constant. You can calibrate your camera, which I do. You can calibrate your computer, which I do. I have to calibrate, you know, but then there's also this, and that's kind of what a, a printing standard okay. is. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Anna had asked in the chat, this is going back a little bit to um, when we were talking about like cell phones versus cameras. Mm -hmm. um, Anna asked if you have any, uh, she struggled with resolution and sharpness before. She has the same phone I do, okay. um, the Galaxy. Right. Um, and she wanted to know if you have any tips for how to adjust settings to make that a little easier. Um, yeah. So. I don't, I don't know the software in your phone or hers. I know this one, yeah. unfortunately. Karen has an iPhone, Anna. Yeah, so, and even any like tips on looking at online resources, maybe there's like tutorials or places you recommend to look, that kind of well, thing would be helpful. There are, there's tons, and actually Adobe has tons of free tutorials for anybody, even if you don't have the software, you're not a Photoshop user per se, or, you know, use whatever, but they have incredible amounts of tutorials for everything. So I would actually start with Adobe. And I always say, if you have a specific question about what you're doing in terms of color balance or that, I mean, try to be specific in asking that answer in Google, asking that question, excuse me, in Google. And you'd be surprised, I mean, be as accurate or close to what you want, if you can, and the internet is infinite mm -hmm. as we know now. Um, but Adobe is a wonder, I use them. It's a great source for tutorials. They have little YouTube videos and everything. And of course, YouTube has videos and everything. Yeah. In the world. <laughs> you just do. And I'd yeah, love I, to get your thoughts also on Lightroom versus Photoshop. Is there anything there that isn't in the other one, or is it just ease of use? It's ease of use. Um, I think Lightroom came after, and I kept, when it first came out, I thought, why would Adobe have a program to program to do almost the same thing, and one would cannibalize the other? But in fact, that hasn't happened. They're just they created a whole market for Lightroom, and I'll tell you, one of the markets is apparently is people who photograph weddings, who photograph groups, who do this because their grouping of things is whatever that analog or the algorithm for that is in that program is much different than Photoshop. Because Photoshop has a little bit of Illustrator in it and, it, and it's different things that artists can use and tool. Adobe Lightroom has some of them, but it's also there are things about massive amounts of images that you can collate and group into a big thing. That's like a very important tool for some people, not for me, because every painting is different. There are no two paintings I've shot that are like that I could ever use that tool in what I do. Photoshop. Is unique that way, and only for me and my purposes. Um, but so they they do some of the same things, and you could easily use Lightroom if you had that um, rather than Photoshop. I mean, you could do anything basic stuff that pe people painters need to use to correct a painting and change sizes and scale and things like that. That's all in Lightroom. You can do that. Yeah. So, but it's just, they're just they do the same thing a lot of it. And then Photoshop is much more. Yeah. Um, I have uh, trouble occasionally with, uh, say, you're a photograph in a rectangle. Mm -hmm. And um, like one, and then when you photograph it, one corner is like lower or higher than it should be. Thanks for asking me. Photoshop has a tool for that. I mean, Photoshop, <laughs> sorry, iPhone has a yeah. tool for that. Oh, yeah. Does yeah. anybody know of this tool? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Isn't it spectacular? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it feels intuitively backwards, like the way oh, it's, it's a slider. Oh, yeah. Open a photo diagram. And so, and we'll go to edit. Oh, just go to yeah, yeah, yeah. It has so to be a photo. Edit. Uh -huh. All right, so you're going to photos. Edit. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a photo of a painting. Yeah, a photo yeah. of be short. Anything really. Okay. Yeah. 
Perfect. Well, that's the problem. Yeah, okay, I here, I have one. Wait, wait, I have, I, have, I have a really good example. I just took this photograph of the top one. In, yeah, right. In, oh, oh, sorry, I don't know my dress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going go to the wow. I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to show you because I just uh, took a photograph. Right. Okay. Ah. All right. So, here's, Fish. Here's a yeah. photograph, right, right, of a photograph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. yeah, at the Museum okay. of Modern Art. Right. Okay, so I took it on an angle. Yes. Okay. So with that, we're going to take that. Oh, okay. I mean, so this, this one. This one. I'm going to hit edit. That one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then edit, and that one. Uh, Excuse me one sec while I find the. My mother in law. The crop, I'm going to go to the crop tool, right? And the crop tool has, really? uh, oh, yeah, they, straight. They okay, so I can, I can, I can, I can do it this way, I can move it, right? So, right, I can yeah. do it that way, yeah. and then, or I go to this one and I can do up and down, in and out. Oh, let's sit there. so it's a keystoning. I can yeah. get it back and forth, or it could go side by side. Oh, yeah, and I, can, I can square this completely, square this photograph up, even though I took. There you go. There it is squared up, even though I took it on an angle. Yeah. Uh, so you know how to use that tool, and it's really effective. But, but this is my problem. That inner orange. That inner orange is uh, like going down. It's it's too bright. No, or it's too dark. It's uh, it's value. Know, if I measure it, you know, it's measured accurately. It's the same. Right. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, let me see. So you're saying this is all that orange and then the second there. Oh, yeah. So it's it's not straight. No, it's not. I see. But how how yeah. is the green straight? Let me let me cancel. Well, the green is because uh, I'm gonna okay. So now, oh, so it's it, so it's straight in the painting, but this yeah. is not straight, which mm -hmm. means the green the whole painting isn't straight. So now you would want to adjust this, right? So you would go to edit. I'll show you. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so you're you would want you're gonna do this tool. Oh, okay. I think you go see it can't back out. Oh, look at that. Oh, Ming. So there you go. I've never fooled around with this. No, yeah. isn't it wonderful? Yeah. I mean, this is relatively it's new. Miracle. Miracle. Like, miracle. Exactly. <laughs> this is that's it. The last one. So that's the last one. Yeah. yeah. So let's hit that one. This one. Yeah. 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 So we just screwed yeah. hers up. And so you could just, yeah. yours is on. Yeah. There. Yeah. there you go. Yeah. Brilliant. Love it. Brilliant tool. No, it's just really, you know, yay. Yay. <laughs> yay. The technology. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Is it good? Yeah. 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 That's good. Then you can really. At first oh, like, wow. No, at first it's a right. story anyway, like I said. Yeah. But once you play yeah. with it, and just do it. Remember, you always use the tool very subtly. Mm -hmm. Just uh, you know, know. And then, yeah. and then it's done. You get her. Hang it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Because I never. What? No, I especially to try. for you, it's like, it's perfect. When you're overhead, yeah. it's really hard to, it's disorienting, right? Yeah. Well, there and is something. something in the in the phone that will tell you if you're if you've gone too yeah. much the keystone yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, but that nice. tool also that corrects for that. Yeah. You can correct yeah. this way. Yeah. This yeah. way. Yeah. 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 But there's the so But well, good. <laughs> I never <laughs> me either. Me neither. <laughs> well, correct it afterwards. Like if you can get yeah. as yeah. square yeah. as you yeah. can yeah. when you're overhead. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna have to put it on the wall. It would change your life. I'll just say that. I, 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 because I'm a product designer, we always did Because we did always. That's a correct. And I just thought that. This is how, yeah. No, I, understand, I understand where you come from. Yeah, to yeah. That. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, any other questions? In the wow. chat, no, no. chat or is anyone here? Um, I yeah. wanted to know about, you said that there's a raw Option yes. in mm -hmm. the phone. Yes. Do you know where that is? If I look at your phone, I won't. Okay. <laughs> or I'll look at my phone and tell you. Okay. Here, it's the iPhone. Yeah. It's an, it's an, it's an iPhone. It's an iPhone. Um... Yeah. Hang on. What's it? Diane, let me okay. uh, find it here and then I'll. Um... It's. 
a pro, but not the one with the four. It's a pro 12. Okay. So just, I'm sorry, to close this off. So just when I open my phone, right? Yeah. My, my camera, excuse me. So up here, you see where it shows it's up there? And it says we're off now. It's off now. And there. Yeah, and but I don't have So you don't have, what software are you up to? Uh, I'm up to the, whatever, the latest. 15 point whatever. Okay. I'll have to figure that one. What? Yeah. The software. I see. Oh, sure. That's here. Yep, it's right there. Well, you have it. There you go. And take it off. And then you. That's the ADCR. Oh, no. The yours is says HDR, not raw. Oh, yeah. Huh. Okay. HDR. Is it under options in the camera? If you have an old enough phone, it might not just be. It might not be. How old is this phone? This is a. Well, oh, you have a pro. You have, yeah, you have a pro. You have a 12 pro. But I don't know. I have a 13 now. So mm -hmm. I don't, I'm trying to see where it's you know, it I can probably I see where it, it, it says it has role when it comes to look like the caption. Oh, yeah. oh, right. In an image. Right. You can yeah. look at the caption and show it. Oh, where, where, where is it? Where would it be? So here's my, when I open camera like this, it would be up there. It's raw. Oh, 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 and you don't. I don't know. Wait, what, what the back one spec there? Um, go to, no, not portrait. Go to. So my word is the iOS version. Oh, that okay. was yeah. Yeah. So How do you know that's the most? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. If you update. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. There. Okay. So, okay. I have an older phone. Oh, and okay. I have yeah. Oh. You don't have it. Um, that's yeah. Here that's the self harm. But it doesn't live in the with the update. It would. Oh, I think that's your fate. Okay. Okay. I would and I think I'm sorry. You're 1561. I think that's your, I think you're up to date. It might be the song, not, uh, yeah, the age of the phone. Maybe you like it. Oh, the Okay. So, so, yeah, yeah, you're up to the, up to the date. You're just so like that. Then we have to get out the phone. Okay. Well, you have Okay, 157. Oh, you know what I think it is? In your settings, there's yeah. a smart HDMI, which right. if you have that click, which is what the default is, right. it will not give you the option to you toggle this on and off. On it will just automatically do everything in HDR. This is all the Yeah. It was in camera settings. Is that the right page there for looking for raw? Oh, for raw. Well, for 12 megapixels, so that's your highest. That's what this camera mm -hmm. like the phone does. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, no, actually, where I was going is the camera. And it would be up here. Right. 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 So, must be with the 13. So right now. And yeah. I have a 13 Pro. So, I'm okay. Yeah, that yeah. was like the next level. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's why I should have that on. Yeah. I actually turned it off. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so now you can control. That raw? Um, it's it's high quality. It's yeah. not raw. I have a similar phone, and our phones are not capable of raw, but they are capable of HDR. So this is the better phone. That's exactly how it's take like three shots and then we're going to get I have the I have that for that. Can you see that for that? Yeah, so it looks like it's, it's not, not raw, but it's not just everything. Yeah, so I can't remember. You also have one of the things that would not be that. Yeah, no, I don't think it would not be that. Oh, I don't think it would not be that. Here. Can I run the that is so interesting. And then just 
it's not raw, but our older part is that for that. Both are kind of you know It's pretty far down. Uh, you're supposed to set it here. Uh, okay. yeah. um, so the main thing in a point you want to use for um, it seems to me in the new cameras, I have a lot more choices. Camera and yeah. that, and the, yeah, I think that's in that's being yeah. the latest one. Yeah. Okay. Prior faster shooting, not lens correction, macro controls. So yeah. Back to that's the, to the camera. Yeah. More yeah. hoops to go through. The next phone will have a little more. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. I think that's okay. the difference. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have yeah. another yeah. question. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some, um, obviously we're in our gallery space right now. Um, yeah. And there's like a lot of different types of earth that we show all the time. And because we only have like this lighting system, mm -hmm. like, we don't have the ideal lighting sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's the case with a lot of our artists and too. But like right. individual pieces, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so like Anna, who's in the chat right now, is a glass artist. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have her in a show in the spring. Okay. Um, and like for something like that, because like glass is so much uh, more, I mean, it's always beautiful, but it's like, beautiful when it's a natural light sure yeah uh, for something like that would you recommend us like doing extra lighting when we're photographing the work or um yeah what it is you you want for something like that you really need to control the yeah lighting. so you might actually do a setup back here that you don't have the ambient light from i don't know if you'll have the front windows open for the show or things like that yeah but you might need to do it and with lights that you can control mm -hmm. and do it in a space like this back here it would yeah that would be the best way i okay. really need a lot of control for glass yeah yeah and then you can do fun things with it too i mean more lights you can you know you'll see what the glass <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost yeah. direct you yeah, but, which is great yeah it's gonna be a fun <laughs> show so, so we also show, have it's gonna be on pedestals i presume like most shelf shelf and then some okay. windows and then we also have alden do you know alden cole no. Um, Alden Cole is one of the dumpster divers that he works oh, okay. with, like vintage collected right. glass, like bowls and stuff that he transforms into lamps. So he does like the LED bulbs that are like rainbow. Right. So, um, so that will kind of the lighting in here. That's mm -hmm. going to be too good. That's terrific. So that'll be really fun. Yeah. yeah show like that. No, really. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard. That's that really. an eight draw. Okay. It's always strong. Um, it always strong. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi. I had a quick question. Can Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Just about the glass, which is an ongoing challenge. I I've had. I sort of have my own studio set up to do this like backlit light box for stained glass. Mm -hmm. Um. But the larger I work, the less able I am to do it. And I'm also because I'm using natural light, I'm getting inconsistency like among um like if i'm submitting a portfolio i have like 10 images and they don't always look super consistent i just wasn't sure like when and if to get sort of professional help i didn't know if there's something in between like a full-on paying for a full-on photo shoot and like if folks do consults or it, i guess i'm just kind of struggling like my work isn't priced at a point where it really makes sense to do everything fully professionally, but. I know, I understand. Uh, um, do you have any access to lights in your studio to do a setup where you actually could use light because the pieces, like you can't control the natural light and the color shift. Can you, do you have lights at all or access to them? I, I have clamp lights. Um, yeah, and I could I could buy better ones <laughs> for sure. Have you played around with them in terms of using maybe a background, a, a neutral background, or even a color, which you could, you know, they sell photographic background paper at any art supply store. And or, you know, and you could maybe put them since they're 
glass, you know, in front of maybe a subtle color, but then also just use a light and see what the light does. Even just try it with the lights that you already have. Um, and, and not have, I don't know what the background you're using for, uh, for photographing these now is. Yeah, yeah, I'm using like a sort of a translucent, um, like essentially like mylar okay. to try to get oh. like a filter. Right, oh, that's good, that's, yeah. And how, how does that work for you? It sounds nice that it's, it could be. It's, it's okay, I, I think, I think the, um, like I said, I've just struggled with the consistency, but I think maybe you're right that doing an artificial lighting setup, but using the same sort of mylar filter right. behind, yeah, which might be a way to do it. Control. And the other thing is I would look at, I'm sure you have glass magazines of different stuff. And I always say, get ideas for something like this and look at the magazines that where people are showing glassware and, and look at the photograph and see what speaks to you in terms of, you know, an image that has, they've used a certain kind of background, whatever, and it's already in a magazine, so we know it's probably professionally photographed. And and just get, try to get maybe some ideas to, that might look like your work would work that way. You know, you could adapt them, but um, the Mylar is a great surface. And, but I think having control of a couple lights would really help. Yeah. All right, thanks so much. Very differently. And, and see, you know, the glass is going to take, it, it's just probably going to direct you in a, in a good way. I love the recommendation of a catalog. I've never heard that before. Mm, no. <laughs> no. I, I mean, yes, good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, no, I think you. It, it can be really helpful to do that because, you know, whether it's you're shooting ceramic work and it's ceramics monthly and you look at that work that's been published um, in glass, beautiful work to see how that, that's been photographed. It's yeah. glass is trickier than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much as you as you know over there. Yeah. Are there any other burning questions? Um, what about installation shots in a gallery? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? <laughs> do you, you used to do that for me, but now yes. you don't want to schlep the stuff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what could I do to do it myself? Like what kind of lens and the camera? So and... really for installation is you want a for wider angle lens. And if you're going to use your phone, then you, this wide lens is sort of perfect. You know, you want to get on the corners of the space to, is if someone can't come to your show and you want to show them. Mm -hmm. And then now, of course, the use of video is so yeah. valuable and yeah. so easy to do. And these cameras are brilliant. My phone is brilliant with video, all of them are. Mm -hmm. And I would do a really wonderful walkthrough of your space. Um, so to show about, someone you're uh, to show that way. A tripod on wheels. So they have I know they make those. Well they do. Yeah, them. but I don't think you I mean that's a big video production sort okay. of setup. I don't think you need that. I think you can walk around the space yourself. And these phones are pretty stable in terms of holding them and that's all orienting. They have cinematic setting on them now. They have all these features for the video. Mm -hmm. Features are really nice on these phones. And I mean people are making short films. Yeah. Films. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. major films on iPhones, and they've been yeah. doing this for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a great thing. So I would think about that too. But really, just you know, Diane, how we used to do. I mean, just get all the the angles to show a long wall of your work, and then do some details. Always do some details okay. because when you're when you push the camera back this far away from a room or a wall, you can't really see a little deep a piece like that or a piece like that on the wall. Right. So then always take a detail shot that really shows the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I right. think like one of the biggest mistakes I always see on like other other galleries um, <laughs> is a lot of people just do like a quick snap from like a distance of like one room and then they're like down and they move on to the next one. And it's like you can't see anything. Like, why would any, you know, like I have photos of my work and shows, like, you know, like I couldn't go to, and I'm like, ooh, I was in this show. I want to see what happened. And it's like all the way in the yeah, back right. with my feet Miles that I'm like, away. great. I yeah. thought I was there. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, also you're going to want to look back on it later too, you know? Oh, sure. It's a great reference. In yeah. Your, in your, but I'll always do the yes. Yeah, very helpful. Yeah. 
I have yep. a question. Sure. Um, for some like dimensions, they require like 300 pixels mm -hmm. for, for those. Can you get that on a phone or? Yes, and then some of these, if you have a tip setting, they they will be can be at three hundred DPI, and I haven't. I have to look in here and see. Well, you can, as uh, we were talking earlier in the setting that has info uh, of an image. Um, look at this, and then let's see what it tells me. So this image that I shot is a JPEG. It tells me how the wide angle is twelve megapixels because that's what these phones are. Mm -hmm. um, it's three thousand by four, so that should be plenty of information. I, I'm trying to think. They don't show DPI the three hundred here, and I'd have to open it in Photoshop to see that. And I, I can't. The camera isn't giving me, giving me this information in their little iPhones info. Right. It tells me the size, the size of the file. So you can change an iPhone mm -hmm. picture in Photoshop. Sure, you can and put you can everything make, in your you info. Can make it in Photoshop, 300, right? Well, you should never go from we like don't want to really go from to three, small to large. Yeah. So um, that's about really getting the settings in your camera at the best camera or phone at the highest settings to yeah. shoot with, and then you don't have to do that because you really can't, as Sam says. You can't go from a really small picture and blow it up because you'll see it. It'll look really grainy and yeah to, to print. But if it was on online, if, it's, if you're just seeing it online, yeah, you could probably get away with it. it yeah, because I've never done that. But a laptop or a desktop or yeah. only at 72 DPI, right? So that's pretty small, and every phone has more than that. Even newer phones. So yeah, in that way, if that's all you're going to look at. Yeah. Not go to print, but yes, yeah. Okay. I think if it's like something you're applying for, especially if it's like a bigger thing, like a residency or something, right. yeah. Um, a lot of the, the judging panels. I mean, I don't know now post COVID. Prior to COVID, a lot of the judging panels would put it on a like a projector slideshow. Mm -hmm. Um, so like your image is going from like this big to the to size this of the day. Oh, okay. so I would never do it for something that's like not for a submission. Yeah, like that. Yeah, because I said earlier, it's like the grants, like the beta fund, for example. They would rent back in the, the slides. They would rent these four thousand dollar projectors and not wow. use like a four hundred dollar Kodak projector. Yeah. They use a really serious institutional, you know, commercial projector to because they really wanted the sharpest lens on it to look at the yeah. work. They don't get to see these paintings, and they they are going to blow them up the size of this wall. So like five megabytes. No, bigger than that. Bigger but, but, but most shows, as you know now, five megabyte has become a standard. For submission wow. everywhere. And slide room started that when everybody started using whether it's Woodmere Art Museum or whoever, all across anywhere, they've used they've created finally a standard of five megabytes. Wow. And that is projectable. And if it's 300 DPI, they can scale it down or scale it up from there. But that is is has become a, a good standard How for these do images. You make them that big? That's not big. That's small. So how how do you control that when you take a picture in well, your phone? That's part of the problem. Is that's what Photoshop does. And in cameras, cameras you have real settings where you can right you can see that in the interface of cameras. Um, in these phones, it's we're not quite there yet mm -hmm. to really have that control of I need a five versus a ten versus a fifty megabyte you know file. So if I take a picture, it happens to be but raw. Will give you the biggest file. Right. Maybe if if you had that, I I have the HDR. We found out. Okay, you have HDR. Yeah. Okay. So, let's so that'll say, make a bigger file. Yeah. Let's say I made one that is three megabytes. I can enlarge it to five megabytes. No. Well, you shouldn't. No, because it will be because it'll deteriorate. Yes. Right. When you do that, so I can go. Lower. But if someone's looking at it on a laptop. Or even desktop, you can get away with that. Yeah, but not, yeah, not oh. if someone's really going to do a big projection. Okay. And it it so, makes a difference how you send it. Also, like that. thank WhatsApp, you for saying that. Yeah, WhatsApp will keep the high resolution, and texting doesn't, and I don't know. No, texting doesn't, and email doesn't. Always depends on who your yeah. email server right. is. Right. They, their limits have gotten much bigger now. Before you yeah. couldn't send. Five megabytes, then 10 megabytes. Now you can send, I think, on most email servers, it's at least 25 now, 30. So that's good. You can do that just through email. I use an upload service, but
But if you don't have that, I mean, about, I'll tell you the best way to use it if you have a big file is we transfer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. W E T R A N S F B R. We transfer. I describe it as the Fisher Price upload mm -hmm. service. <laughs> it's the easiest thing. You can't make a mistake. It's so simple. And they have two gigabytes for free before you have to sign up and have an account with them. Mm -hmm. So no one will, you'll have, you'll not be sending images that size ever. Mm -hmm. And you can see it on store it's anything. anything. It's um, like only if you pay. Things. It's just to send, if you pay any mm -hmm. service, then they will store them for you. But you're better off storing them on your computer on a hard drive, um, right, in yeah. a separate external mm -hmm. hard drive. Mm -hmm. Or if you use the cloud, the cloud. Yeah, I don't know if anybody ever visits the cloud, but the cloud. Yeah, yeah, I use Dropbox, or we all the whole gallery so, uses Dropbox, and they store everything. And they store it mm -hmm. as well for you, which is that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we pick up Dropbox. Otherwise, um, like for your own. Or Apple. I just like the um, everybody is free. So we can part of it. Yeah, they all got in that game. Um, but we transfer is great because I heard about it through you, Isn't and it then I use it for everything now. It's awesome. It's nice. And when yeah. I artist, I use Pytail, which I've used yeah. for years, which is like it's where Dropbox wants to be, in my opinion. Yeah, but it's great. But some people have trouble opening stuff or downloading, and maybe not many. Most of my artists have not had a problem with it. And so, but if they do, I just I'll send it by we transfer because yeah. it's just so simple. Mm -hmm. So you just send you. Anybody can receive anyone we transfer absolutely and um, it's all through email. So your email will be put in there, they know it's coming from you, and then you type in their email and you attach the file or the image, the folder, whatever, and off it goes. And there it's mm -hmm. it's really simple. And first two gigabytes of free, which yeah. is more than free enough. For it's anything. like really good when you're applying for a show where they require you to send it by email, but then your files are too big to send right. it by email. Right. And then you, you just like type the little email in to WeTransfer and their email address. Mm -hmm. And then they have everything. And it's done. You send it, it's fine. It's so easy. And then if you send it to someone and they need to send it to someone else, just tell them to forward that email. It's so simple. Like if whatever you can't download it and figure out how to get it to the gallery or whoever just forward your email from them just forward it and so we just yeah so we transfer the transfer is an email server uh it's not an email server it's an yeah, upload like, server yeah you download uh, images yeah um but it's it's done through email well, most of them are most of them you use your email that's how they come they it's come by email well? all of them actually e yes yeah that's it that's yeah. quite it's quite a wonderful yeah it's all together, one word. One word. Oh, okay. but they do a capital T. So it's capital um, W E and then capital T R A N S F E R. So, yeah. We transfer as one word. That's right. All right. That's great. Does anyone else have any other, any other post questions? Um, if I don't think we actually said this. Um, Karen works out of the Crane Arts Building um, at Fortune Hundred North American. Um, I think your email is just Karen Mosh mm -hmm. uh, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. So, if you ever have any other questions or want to hire her, please reach out to Karen. Feel free Hi. for questions. Any if not, anybody has her email. Me. Uh, not a problem. I'm happy to answer anything. Yeah. And like Bryant was not wrong at the beginning of this. Karen is the best photographer in our industry. We recommend her to everyone because we have personally worked with her. She is great. Um never have to color correct anything. We've been uh editing photos Thank you so for a long time. And I've, I've never had to edit any photos other than shrinking them. So <laughs> I make them too big. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, it's everyone has their own size. They have their own size. But yeah. they, every piece of art looks different. It can be 14 by 16. It can be 14 by 17. It can be just not same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Well, thank you so much for coming. It has been uh, wonderful I'm sharing I'm your sure. nuggets of wisdom with us, and you're very much appreciated. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.